This week, we welcome back Sylvester Nyer as our guest chef, and he's prepared a special menu to celebrate Women's Day. This is also a personal tribute to two women who played a major part not only in his life, but also his choice of career. Sylvester's grandmother was also a chef, and he still admires his mother's cooking. So this menu is also dedicated to them. Hi, I'm Sylvester Nyer, and today I'll be preparing a nice lunch menu inspired by my mum and my grandmother for Women's Day. We're going to do a line fish, which is barramundi, a cos lettuce, some mango salsa, and then for the main course, I'm going to make some handmade roti, pushing boundaries as a young Indian man again. And uh, I'm going to do a butter paneer, and for dessert, we're going to do a nice no-bake berry pie. I'm going to start off with some butter. It's a small helping. Women love to be healthy and butter is quite strong. I'm going to add my favorite ingredient, which is my truffle oil. Just a little bit of that. I just want the butter and the truffle oil to infuse a little bit. And as soon as it begins to sizzle a bit, we can put in the fish. Make sure the fish is skin side down, so we've got a nice crispy skin on that. We're going to add a bit of our dill powder spice. I'm gonna do a little bit of crushed black pepper over there. I'm just gonna spoon a bit of the butter over. So that's gonna add that nice nutty flavor from the butter browning a little bit and also a bit of that truffle oil infusing and heating the black pepper and the dill seasoning that I've put over. And I'm just gonna flip it over. As you can see, nice crispy skin there. About a minute, a minute and a half on either side just so that the fish is cooked through nicely, but still nice and soft and juicy on the inside. While that's going, I'm gonna start to arrange my plate. Okay, we got a bit of nice coarse lettuce here. I'm just gonna take that over to my plate. Uh, generally in salads, coarse lettuce is torn or shredded up, but I'm gonna use it whole today. It's gonna make the dish much easier to eat, almost like a wrap or a roll. My mother enjoyed eating light, easy, fast food, uh, that was obviously healthy as well for, for obvious health reasons in, in the daily cooking and stuff like that. So this specific dish, if cooked at home, would probably go with some sesame seed oil or, or just plain old olive oil or just a truffle oil. But uh, being the chef that I am French trained, I love using butter. I'm just gonna remove the fish from the pan. So I'm gonna put that straight onto my chopping board. I'm gonna just cut a few cubes off the fish. And then I'm gonna lay that over my coarse lettuce leaves and to make sure that it's easy to pick up and eat. Now I'm gonna add a bit of uh, my mango and tomato salsa to the fish. So we got a nice chunky salsa here. Uh, to your desire, whatever you'd like to put into the salsa, you can throw some avocado, chopped chili. Mango goes well with everything. And then I'm gonna finish that off with a drizzle of truffle oil. And then we're gonna finish that off with a bit of radish and rocket microgreens. There you have it, my coarse lettuce and fish salad with mango and tomato salsa. So now onto the main course. The first dish that I had was inspired by my mom. The second dish that I have is inspired by my grandmother. Our first ingredient, our dry spice mix, which consists of uh, cinnamon sticks, cardamom, black ilachi, some bay leaves, caraway seeds, and some cumin seeds. Our onion mix, which is red and white onions. Our chopped coriander, some coconut milk, some jam tomato puree, some pure butter, some paneer cheese. Lastly, our chili powder mix. And then I'm gonna go straight into cooking. I'm gonna add some of our dry spices. And I'm just gonna let that sweat off a bit in the pan. Then we're gonna add a nice helping of butter into that. At this stage, before the butter can start browning, cause I don't want that to happen with this dish. I'm gonna add some onions to it. So you just want that to go for a little while. Then we're gonna add in chili powder to the dish. I'm not gonna add too much to this. And then we're gonna give that a nice quick mix of butter paneer is a very quick dish. So I'm gonna put a bit of the tomato in there. Okay, you're gonna give that a nice mix. I'm gonna add a bit of coriander at this stage to my tomato mixture. We're gonna add a few blocks of the paneer cheese and that's gonna kinda melt away at the bottom of the dish and also will assist 
with the thickening of the dish. So now I'm gonna add some of the coconut milk. Nice helping of the coconut milk, so you get a nice light orange color to that. You can see those beautiful colors as I mix it coming out now. We're gonna let that go for about five minutes. And in the meantime, I'm gonna start getting ready to make my roti. So I'm just gonna put some water on to boil. Some flour straight into my mixing bowl. That I'm just gonna create a bit of a well with my hand. I'm gonna put a small piece of butter in here. Not too much, because then the roti will get a bit too crispy. I'm gonna add a bit of salt to this now. Touch of truffle oil to that. Also not too much, because it'll make the roti a bit too crispy. And then I'm gonna ladle in some boiling water. Also make sure you have a bit of extra flour, just in case you add too much of water, and also for the surface for rolling the roti out. Okay, I'm gonna get nice and messy now and stick my hands straight into this boiling hot mixture. And you're gonna kind of get that all together until it's a nice bread dough mixture. The boiling water assists with the cooking of the flour, so when you roll the roti out nice and thin straight onto a pan, it's just a quick flip. Okay, once the dough mixture is come together, you wanna kinda try to get all of the flour out. And once it starts getting off your fingers, that's when you know your dough is almost ready. Okay, I'm gonna just flour the surface down a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna pop my dough straight on here, start working it in a little bit so it gets nice and smooth. You don't wanna add too much of flour as well because that will also make the roti hard. Rolling roti always takes me back to Phoenix at my grandmother's place, Sunday afternoons, always joining her in the kitchen and getting ready for the family lunch. Okay, I'm gonna separate this into three pieces and just roll it up with some flour. I'm flattening out the rotis now and I'm gonna start getting ready to roll it. I'm just gonna grab my rolling pin. I'm gonna spin it a bit and then I'm gonna just dust it with some flour. That's just so the roti doesn't stick. I'm gonna roll the roti in an angle so it turns while I'm rolling it. I'm just gonna give it a small turn. I'm just gonna roll it out with my hand a little bit. I'm just gonna grab this pan. I'm gonna put it on my stove, let that heat up a little bit before I put my roti in. You want your pan to be hot, not extremely hot, because you're gonna pop a little bit of butter in. Not too much, because we're not gonna fry the roti. We just want it to coat the bottom of the pan so it doesn't stick. And then we're gonna put our roti straight in. You just wanna grab the roti, the flour tends to burn when it, once it hits the pan. You wanna remove that. So you're gonna pop that straight on. So now that the roti is in the pan, as soon as you know it's time to turn the roti over for the next side to cook, it'll start to smoke up a little bit and it'll also start to bubble and then you flip it over. That's almost done. I'm just gonna flip that over one more time. Okay, so I'm gonna get this off the heat and I'm gonna start getting ready with my dessert course. So for our dessert, I'm doing a healthy no-bake mixed berry pie. So firstly, I'm gonna start with our whipped cream. So I'm just gonna pop that into a mixing bowl. It's a nice helping of whipped cream. And then we're gonna stir it up till it's nice and smooth. We're gonna mix some of our homemade caramel sauce in there. So this is obviously gonna create a caramel cream. I'm just gonna mix that up and that's gonna be for the topping. I'm just gonna set that aside and I'm gonna grab some strawberries. Okay, and you're gonna create a flat end on that so you don't cut yourself. So now that my strawberries are cut, I'm gonna grab my ready-made pastry. Then I'm gonna line that with some of my caramel sauce. So a nice helping of the caramel sauce in there. I'm just gonna spread this out. I'm gonna just set the strawberries over my tart that's filled with caramel already. I'm gonna just do a chiffonade of mint, which is a cutting method. I'm gonna roll that up first. And without picking my knife up, I'm just gonna slide that across. So I'm gonna sprinkle that over just to add a nice fresh kick to it once you bite in. I'm just gonna go back to my cream and caramel mixture and I'm gonna scoop that over. So we're gonna do some 
frozen berries over the cream now. I'm gonna do a bit of icing sugar. Then I'm gonna just do some mint and I'm gonna finish it off with some nice colored pansies. Okay, so the curry is ready. The cheese is nice and soft, nice decadent melt away. So once you bite into that, it's just gonna melt away. The roti is already done, so I'm gonna start plating up. To garnish that, I'm gonna add some raw paneer cheese over the top. I'm gonna drizzle some coconut milk. And then I'm gonna finish that with some nice pea tendrils. And that's a lovely three-course meal inspired by the ladies in my life for Women's Day.